This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs and Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. And the jacket, which is back because I've lost 15 kilos and I now fit in it. As we've said many times before, while the European electric car market is full of compelling, affordable, compact electric vehicles, the same cannot be said of the US, where really small vehicles aren't that popular. But come 2024, there will be one extra electric model to choose from, the all-electric second-generation Fiat 500. While the original Fiat 500e was made and sold for the US market, and in fact you couldn't buy one new in Europe, the tables were turned when the second-generation Fiat 500 launched two years ago in Europe. Fiat had said at the time it had no plans to bring the 500 to the US or Canada, but this week at the LA Auto Show, company CEO Olivier Francois confirmed that the company will launch the electrified Fiat 500 in the US in 2024. We'd expect only the longer range variant to be offered, but nothing firm has been confirmed regarding specs or pricing. So watch this space. Midweek, Lucid Motors held a special online reveal event called in the air, at which it shared its design for the first all-electric SUV from the company, the Lucid Gravity. A full-size luxury SUV that will be available in a choice of two or three row configurations, Lucid says that the Gravity will offer, quote, supercar levels of performance, end quote, and that its range per charge will only be beaten by the Lucid Air sedan. Taking the whole idea of panoramic glass roofs to the next level, the Lucid Gravity Gravity features more glass than I think I've ever seen in a car. Lucid says the reservation books will open early next year, at which point it will release more information. But this will again be a car that's too expensive for the majority of us. At the same event, Lucid did confirm the start of deliveries for three more Lucid Air variants, including the Lucid Air Pure, whose starting price undercuts the starting price of the Tesla Model S. While he's still the CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, The Boring Company and Neuralink, Elon Musk has been kind of distracted of late with his latest acquisition, Twitter. He's also been testifying in court in Delaware as part of an ongoing court battle filed against Tesla and Musk by a Tesla shareholder over his 2018 CEO pay package that netted him 56 billion US dollars, something which, alongside Musk's management of Twitter, has caused Tesla stock to continue to fall. Thanks to the court proceedings, however, we did learn two things. First, Musk admitted that he'd made some Tesla decisions without the board of directors' approval. And secondly, thanks to testimony from Tesla board member James Murdoch, we now know that Musk has recently discussed with the board of directors potential successors to replace him as CEO. We know very little else at this time. Volkswagen confirmed this week that it's delivered a half million ID-badged electric vehicles to date well ahead of its original planned schedule. That goal, set by Volkswagen's previous CEO, Dr. Herbert Diess, who, by the way, is one of the rumoured but not confirmed candidates to succeed Elon Musk at Tesla, was set long ago before the current part supply crisis and for a while there was some concern from outside Volkswagen that the company would not meet the target. While Volkswagen's production volumes for the ID family of vehicles isn't yet near the same kind of production volumes as its internal combustion engine cars, Volkswagen says it is on track to become a 100% all-electric brand in Europe from 2033 onwards, helped by the fact that all ID-badged vehicles and some EVs from other Volkswagen Group brands are made on the same MEB platform.
Continuing our coverage of quarterly earnings in the EV world, we've got news from Oregonian three-wheel specialist Akimoto, whose stock price has been struggling this year. Closing out the quarter, Akimoto reports making 150 new FUVs, its highest quarterly production figure to date. Meanwhile, its delivery figures were split between 74 customer vehicles, 11 vehicles for marketing and other quote-unquote company uses, and 46 vehicles for rental fleet. When it comes to financials, the company posted a revenue of just over $2 million for the quarter, less than half of what Wall Street had expected. It recorded a net loss of $17 million, or around $0.38 cents per chair. With Mark Fronmeyer no longer company CEO after a sudden departure in August and share prices now trading at $0.41 cents per share, things are not looking good. Sticking with quarterlies, Polestar posted its quarterlies this week, with the third quarter posting increased production, deliveries and revenue and slashing losses in the process. Last quarter, 9,215 Polestars were delivered. The company recorded a total revenue of $1.48 billion in the quarter, slashing its losses to $196.4 million, a net loss of $0.14 cents per share. I should note, some outlets have recorded a profit, but it was written weirdly in its sheets. Polestar, which went public via a reverse merger in June, didn't give us actual production figures for the quarter, or at least we couldn't find them in official SEC filings. But the company CEO confirmed that it has produced the 20,000 so cars needed to hit its 50,000 vehicle delivery goal for the year. It basically just has to deliver them. Having successfully secured more funding recently, everything looks good for Polestar. Tesla has dominated the new electric car market around the world for just about a decade now, receiving the lion's share of interest and in sales when it compares to its rivals. But the latest Brandwatch survey from the Kelly Blue Book suggests that interest in new Teslas has quote-unquote plummeted in recent quarters. Tesla fell from fifth to sixth in its ranking of most shopped luxury brands, with interest dropping 3% in Q3 from Q2 as a brand. Model 3 interest, meanwhile, fell by 10%. But this is all, I think, fairly explainable. We've seen a massive increase in the number of competent luxury electric vehicles going on sale or getting revealed this year, some of which we've reviewed. That, combined with the cooling in the number of people buying new cars as we face an economically uncertain future, and combined with the way Elon Musk's recent actions are impacting Tesla's brand image, would explain the shift we're seeing. As always, context matters. It's been a really good week for Hyundai's Ioniq 6, the brand's first long-range electric sedan. And it starts with news of the car's US range ratings. Published midweek ahead of its US debut at the LA Auto Show, the Ioniq 6 has its targeted official 345-mile, 547-kilometer EPA rating from a 77.4 kilowatt-hour battery pack and 0.21 coefficient of drag. I should note that number number, though, by the way, has been tested but is still waiting official EPA confirmation. Over in Europe, meanwhile, Hyundai confirmed that the launch edition of its Ioniq 6 sold out in under 24 hours. Although, again, I should note that only 2,500 examples were up for grabs in the European launch markets of the UK, Germany, Norway, France and the Netherlands. Expect the same next year when the same car goes on sale in the US. At this point in the show, we'd usually continue with two more regular stories. But because a total of seven electric cars received five-star crash ratings this week from Euro NCAP, I'm going to do a bit of a special roundup here of the various crash test results awarded. And because we just had a story about the Ionic 6, let's start there, with the large family car being awarded a five-star rating overall, split between 97% and 87% ratings for adult and child occupant safety, and 65 and 90 percent for vulnerable road users and safety assist. The Tesla Model S, making a return to Europe after a short absence caused by the ground-up re-engineering of the same and the launch of the Model S Plaid, earned a 94% for adult occupant and 91% for child occupant, while vulnerable road users and safety assist features scored 85 and 98% respectively. The NIO ET7, meanwhile, making its European debut, scored 91% and 87% respectively for adult and child 
occupant safety, letting itself down slightly with a 73% vulnerable road user score. Safety assistance features earned it a 95% in the safety assist category. Nissan's all-electric Aria compact SUV, meanwhile, still rated with a five stars, did less well in the adult occupant, scoring 86%. Child occupant was rated at 89%, while vulnerable road users and safety assist features were given 74 and 93% scoring, respectively. The just-launched Smart Number no. 1, much larger than its predecessor, achieved a full five-star rating, despite its still quite small size. While it managed 90 86 and 89% for adult and child occupants respectively. It was let down by a 71% vulnerable road user score and managed 88% for safety assist. And finishing off, a pair of ratings for the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra. Essentially, being the same car underneath, they were given the same safety scores. 88 and 87% for adult and child occupant, while vulnerable road users and safety assist were given 79 and 91% respectively. It's awesome seeing so many new electric cars coming to the roads of Europe, but it's even more awesome knowing they're all five-star crash rated. Bring on the next batch. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you're in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. I think by now it's pretty obvious to most people that Toyota is not super interested in battery electric vehicles yet, but it does like to reference EVs in its advertising for hybrids and hydrogen fuel cell cars. And this week at the LA Auto Show, it came up with a new way to describe the next generation 2023 Toyota Prius it debuted there. Quote, an EV with an engine, end quote. The fifth generation Prius is certainly more sporty in its styling than its predecessors, but while Toyota is making a big noise about the improved aerodynamics and total power output, the standard hybrid only promises slightly better fuel economy than the current model. The plug-in hybrid variant, meanwhile, known as the Prius Prime, does get a sizable 50% improvement on range per charge and does get solar panels on its roof. But frankly, as many outlets have noted, Toyota's offerings are still, ultimately, powered by gasoline. And finally, we all know that your average electric car has the ability to really shift when you step on it, and that's thanks to the instant torque that electric motors produce. Production EVs aren't known for their top speed because automakers tend to electronically limit them to a reasonably sensible upper limit. Not so for Croatian firm Rimac, whose Nevera hypercar has just set a new world speed record to become the world's fastest production electric vehicle. Piloted by a professional test driver, the two million dollar plus car clocked an official speed record of 258 miles per hour or 412 kilometers per hour on a closed test circuit in Germany. If you're wealthy enough to own a Rimac Nevera though, you'll need to get special permission to get yours to go that fast because out of the factory they're only limited to 352 kilometers per hour. <sighs> And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I won't be here next week with a roundup show because I'm based in the US and it's American Thanksgiving, but I'll be back in two weeks time with more lovely content for you. And of course, the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shurbidge will be there with content in the meantime. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.